Didn't somebody give you this when you graduated the academy as a joke? Mm-hmm. And he's cool, all right? Honey, I thought we agreed not to transport any junk. Junk? That little guy is awesome. Okay. Here's your awesome. Thank you. What's wrong? I know that look. I was just thinking, did we make the right decision to move back after all this time? A lot has changed. We definitely made the right decision. We both grew up here. Why shouldn't our kids grow up here? This is what we've always talked about. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And you got that great job at Holy Cross. I don't have the job. I'm interviewing. Honey, you went to school there. Yeah, when I was six. Listen, they're gonna love you, okay? You know what? It's really beautiful out. What do you say we take a little drive? Okay, when are we gonna deal with all these boxes? Later. Come on, it'll be fun. Let's do it. Come on. You're bad. I know. So uh, when is that end table going to be ready? Well, we just have to fix the leg. How's tomorrow? Yeah, that's, that's good. Thank you. How beautiful is this? Yeah, that really is beautiful. How much is this? 25. I'm going to get it for you. David, we're already buying the end table. I want you to have it. It's beautiful. Are you sure? I'm sure. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> Tiny little piece of film. Looks like there's some people on it. Probably from someone's old home movie, huh? Yeah, let me see that. Here. Oh, yeah. It's melted on one side. Hmm. Anything else in that box? Like what? Money, maybe? Can I help you? Yeah, Detective Seca to see Lieutenant Mangione. Come in. Lieutenant, David Seca to see you. He'll be right with you. Thank you. You the NYPD guy? <laughs> yeah. David, how are you? Hey. Come on in. Huh. Thanks. Well, I haven't seen you since you were, what, 22, 23? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Come on, have a seat. You know, your father always used to say, someday, my son is going to be wearing a Callstat PD badge. And now, here you are. I'm sorry about what happened to you, Dad. Yeah, thanks. So, listen, why'd you leave the job in the city? I mean, it looked like you had a 
good thing going on over there in line for Detective Sergeant. Jennifer's pregnant. And we thought it would be best to raise a family where we have some roots. Yeah, well, I'd say you have roots. It isn't every day the mayor calls me up and asks me to hire some. Well, Jennifer's family and the mayor. Yeah, yeah, I know. Small town like this, everybody's got connections. <sighs> you won't get any special treatment. I don't expect any. I'm partnering you with uh, Jimmy Gersh. Good. Wendy, can I have one of those chocolate milks? David, the chocolate milk here is unbelievable. I, I, they make their own syrup. I know, believe me. I used to drink them all the time when I was a kid. So, uh, why NYPD? Why not call us that like your phone up? I would have been reporting to my old man, which I figured I've done enough of in my life, so I actually went in a different direction. I know what you mean. I got out of high school. I went to work for my father in his garage in Union City. Kept telling me, Jimmy, one day all of this is going to be yours. Scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Heard they were hiring cops and calls that. Here I am. Us. Wendy, make that chocolate milk to go, please. Ma'am. Thanks. Good luck with this one, fellas. Thanks a lot, man. Miss Blaine, Detective Second. What took you guys so long? You want to tell us what happened? My Mercedes? It was right here. Are you sure you parked it there? Of course I'm sure. Did you leave the keys in the ignition? Did you leave the motor running? No. I parked the car, locked the doors, and went to the mall. Your vehicle, where was it registered? New York. From New York? Manhattan. I wouldn't even come to Jersey if it weren't for the malls. Welcome to New Jersey. the film strip you found. I scanned oh, wow. it. Yeah. Does that look like the barrel of a gun to you? Huh? Right there. You see? You see that? Yeah. So the guy's carrying a rifle, so what? Yeah, but why would he have a gun under his coat? I mean, look, he's standing next to this man-made structure. There's people walking around. I mean, you don't carry a rifle under your coat on a city street unless you're up to something, right? I wouldn't get too carried away. I think it's just a guy carrying a rifle. <laughs> yeah, probably. Are you gonna come to bed? Mm. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. <laughs> Well, are you crazy? That's my signed championship baseball. Oh, you are gonna get it. I'm gonna kick your ass. Oh, you are gonna get it. You are so dead. <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Jimmy, those damn kids, they came running in here like a bunch of animals. What'd they take? Took a whole box of candy. Look, right over here. I told you what to do, Sam. Talk to the kids' fathers. I got it, David. You know them. They're customers of yours, right? What do you want me to do? You, you want me to run in a bunch of 12-year-olds? Is that what you want? So tell me, uh, how do you know that this Mr. Um... Watson? Yeah, right. Mr. Watson ran over your award-winning tomatoes. He's been jealous of them ever since I won the state fair two years in a row. Really? Really. You know what second place is? What's that? First loser. 
<laughs> okay. I'll give Mr. Watson a call. We'll try to get this worked out. Yeah, right. Okay. help you? Yeah, my uh, wife and I were here a couple of days ago. Oh, yes, I remember you. Yeah, I'm here to pick up the end table. Great. Here you go. Good as new. Oh, wow, it looks great. Yeah. yeah nice job. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that small antique jewelry box we bought? Yes. Yeah, I'm just curious. You wouldn't happen to know where you got that, would you? Oh, sorry. I can't tell you that. We take items on consignment with the understanding that the owner information remains confidential. Well, you think you can make an exception this one time? Oh, okay. Uh, that box was brought in by Patty Miller. Can you tell me where she lives? Oh, Patty and Harold moved to North Carolina last month. Hmm. All this stuff belonged to Patty's mother, Thelma Marshall. Her mother is deceased? Oh, no, she lives over at a managed care facility in Rutherford. Oh, well, thanks. All right, I'm gonna grab this. Oh, I'll help you. The doctor said I'm fine. Oh, honey, that's great news. Yeah. Listen, the traffic's pretty bad, so I think I'm gonna stop by and see Monica. Maybe have a little dinner. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. There are leftovers in the fridge for you, and I'll be back before nine. Okay. I love you. What are you doing with that rifle? Some days she's coherent, and some days she's a little hard to reach. Well, let's hope she's having a good day. Thelma, I brought this nice young man to see you. Mrs. Marshall, how are you? Am I supposed to know you? No, actually, we've never met. Well, thank God. I thought I forgot somebody else. I'll be back in a few minutes to check. Thank you, Cindy. They're so nice here. Are you a doctor? No, actually, I'm a cop. Uh, what is this about? Curiosity. Uh, I wanted to ask you about a small jewelry box. I believe it belonged to you. Cindy! Cindy! Mrs. Cindy! Mar what? What is it? What, Thelma? You're not one of them, are you? Who are you talking about? Look, I don't think this is a good time. Thelma, do you want him to leave? Are you one of them? Are you one of them? No. Yes. Prove it. Karlstadt PD. OK? It's OK. It's OK. Good luck. Well, that's a lovely photograph. Thank you. Stanley always said I looked like an angel in that photo. Stanley was your husband? Yes. 
Mrs. Marshall, you thought I was one of them. Who are you talking about? They all thought I was crazy. Well, I don't think you're crazy. My husband and I were on vacation in Dallas. It was 1963. We, we had just uh, bought this new movie camera. It was an Argus. Uh, I got so carried away that I used up all the film before Kennedy even got there. So when we got back to New Jersey, I, I had the film developed. I'll, I'll never forget the day we watched it. S Stanley was in, in such shock that he, he turned off the projector, but, but he forgot to turn off the bulb. So the, the heat burned right through the film. I, I, I found that piece of film at the bottom of the projector a, a few days later. I begged him not to talk to them, but no, Stanley insisted. He told me that it was the right thing to do. He said that the He said that the authorities should have the film. They killed him. I know they did. The doctor said that he had a heart attack. A heart attack at 41. They killed him. I'm sure of it. Well, Mrs. Marshall, what was on that film? Me and my husband and that man. So why did your husband think it was so important to take the film to the authorities? Oh, because that man was standing on the grassy knoll. Why would she lie about something like that after 40 years? You said she sounded kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, I was curious about the guy with the gun. Next thing I know, she's telling me he was standing on the grassy knoll. Seems pretty far-fetched to me. Hmm. What is this? <laughs> That's part of my well-worn collection. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I threw that out when we packed out. <laughs> It's never going. It's never Gersh. Jimmy, it's David. You on your way? Well, actually, uh, there's something I gotta take care of. You think you can cover for me? Shouldn't take more than an hour. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks. 
Got to go. See you later. All right. Where's Saka? Uh, he went over to the state lab, Little Falls, to make a pickup. He should be back soon. State lab, huh? Yeah. Okay. I need the rest of these uh, PBA transfer papers filled out. I'll let them know. So how's this kid? He's gonna be all right. If he's anything like his dad, we're in good shape. Actually, that's not why I'm here. As you can see, your alma mater hasn't changed very much. I know. I actually find it kind of comforting. The music curriculum here at Holy Cross is quite different than in the New York City public school system. But I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. The next thing that has to happen is I have a meeting with the school board tomorrow. I'll let you know as soon as they've made a decision. Okay. All right, then, um, thank you, Mrs. Askely. You're quite welcome. Ever since I wrote the book, I get three or four wackos a week. I don't mean you, Detective, but, uh, they do have a, uh, habit of coming out of the woodwork. This does seem to be the grassy knoll. Hmm. How'd you find me? The web? Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, uh, I know there are plenty of books written by authors on this subject matter. Why'd you pick me? You were the only one in Jersey. Geographically qualified. I'm flattered. Have you checked to see that the image on this strip of film has not been altered? I haven't had a chance to check that yet. Well, you need to do that. Now, this woman uh, who said she was at Dealey Plaza, can you prove that? Well, after I spoke with her, listened to her story, I believe her. And was this film exposed the day of the assassination? That's the assumption. Oh, well. Assumptions are a problem when you deal with facts. Nicotine gum. Want a piece? No, thanks. Had to quit smoking. It's killing me. Talk about a fact. Hmm. I am not a conspiracy theorist. But I will tell you that this little piece of film, very interesting, 
And if what I'm holding in my hand is authentic, I guess I don't have to tell you the implications. Keep me posted, okay? All right. Thank you. Yep. Big case. What's up? Pampered Pets is missing a canary. Let's do it. <laughs> I think it went really well. But, you know, there are five other candidates. Look, you're terrific. They'd be crazy not to hire you. Really? Yeah. You know, I've got a really good feeling about this. Uh, honey, I gotta go. Okay. I love you. I love you, too. They found the bird. Yeah, what was it? Cat got him. So what? We got a homicide? Yeah. But none of the witnesses will talk. Not even the parrot? He's scared. To tell someone about this? Yeah. Grassy Knoll, huh? Look, I, I, I'm not saying you're wasting your time, but. This image is how old? You're gonna have to get lucky. But like I told you, if this guy's ever had a mugshot, some should come up. Mm. What's that? It's asking for my security password. Is that unusual? For a mugshot? Yeah. Oh. 89% match. Not bad. Vincent Garbone. Grand theft auto, breaking and entering. Suspected ties to organized crime. Looks like some low-level mob guy. Uh -huh. It says here he was murdered at Chicago Midway Airport in 1963. Midway Airport? Was he coming or going? Coming. Just got off a flight from Dallas, Texas. What was the date? <sighs> November 23rd, 1963. Problem. Why haven't you taken care of it? I thought you needed to be in the loop on this one, sir. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. You've been with us three days. You've been late twice. Yeah, I'm just trying to get settled in the house, you know? I don't mind covering your ass once in a while. It's just, uh, <laughs> I'm running out of excuses already. Smells great. Hot roast. Fantastic. Did, uh, did you hear from the school today? Nope. Okay. Well, when did they say they were going to contact you? They didn't, but the board met this afternoon. Okay. Well, maybe they haven't made a decision yet. Maybe. Oh, honey. Come on, don't worry. You're right. Why should I worry? It's only the perfect job at the perfect school. Well, here. Honey, it's going to work out. Okay. 
it is. If you say so. <laughs> I say so. I took the film to the FBI. Yeah? What'd they say? Well, turns out the guy in the film strip was a mobster who was whacked in Midway Airport in November 1963. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was returning home from Dallas. So, what did the FBI think? Nothing yet. It's kind of wild, though, huh? I'll tell you, Mickey, this retirement thing, you wear it well. It's good. Yeah, I guess so, you know, yeah. but I still keep busy. I'm doing a little PI work, so if you ever suspect him of anything. I'm pretty sure he's been sneaking some candy. I'll start the surveillance immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mickey and my dad, they, uh, they met in Vietnam. That's right. It was actually our last day in country. We're on a military transport heading back to the States. And, I, and I'll tell you, we talked for hours. We really hit it off. And he invites me up here for a visit. And the next thing I know, I'm in a call staff police uniform, living on 2nd Street. <laughs> <laughs> you know your old man, kid. He could talk anybody into anything. So anyway, where's this photograph you want me to look at? Yeah, let me, uh, let me get that. Like a Winchester Model 70. What's that? It's a sniper rifle. Jenkins, you ran a facial recognition search on somebody named Vincent Garbone? Why? For Detective Sack of Carlstadt PD. Well, I just got an urgent query about that search. From who? CIA. <sighs> How are we doing with that Grand Theft Auto? Good. We get several leads. Oh. Jenkins, what's up? We need to talk. All right. You ready for lunch? Uh, I'll call you back. Actually, there's something I got to do. All right. I'm starving. Look, you did your job, you brought it to us, we'll take it from here. But, but wait a second, why would the CIA give a shit about a mobster who was whacked over 40 years ago? I don't know. Post 9-11, everything sends up a red flag. On the record answer, right? Look, maybe he had something to do with it, maybe he didn't, I don't know. A lot of people have been working on this for a long time. You're not gonna solve it. Just let it go. Forget about it. culture is in love with conspiracy theories. Yeah, I realize that. But there's a lot of things about the assassination that just, they don't make sense. Oh, really? Name me one. Well, Lee Harvey Oswald was portrayed as a nutcase, which you yourself wrote about in your book. Someone who craved attention, right? That's right. OK. Well, when he finally found himself in the brightest spotlight on the planet, what did he do? What did he say? Did he spout off about the causes he believed in? Talk about how terrible the government was? No. He said, I didn't do it. I'm a patsy. 
can I have a lawyer? That's what he said. Why? Oh, I don't know. I'm not a psychic. OK, well, just for a minute. Let's forget about the facts, OK? Let's forget about the research. What does your gut tell you? My gut? Yeah. Let's just assume that the man in the film strip was standing on the grassy knoll the day that Kennedy was assassinated. You uh, are asking me to speculate. That's right. OK, well, we have one assumption here, that uh, your man in the film strip was on the grassy knoll during the Kennedy assassination. And you have one fact, that he was a mob associate. That's right. OK. He wasn't there to kill Kennedy. And how did you come up with that? You just asked me to speculate. OK. No one will ever convince me that the mob was capable of murdering the president of the United States. But who was capable? CIA. That's right. So your mobster on the grass, you know, wasn't there to assassinate the president, but he was there to take out the shooter, Lee Harvey Oswald. And now stay with me. The CIA couldn't risk having another man in the book depository. Why? That would be another gun to account for. How are they going to explain that? But taking out Oswald from the grassy knoll would be perfect. He's dead, he can't talk. The shooter on the grassy knoll disappears into the confusion. End of story. Yeah, but that never happened. Well, I guess they went to plan B. Jack Ruby. Sounds plausible, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Anything about the Kennedy assassination was so implausible. As long as you don't let the facts stand in your way. Welcome to Holy Cross, Jennifer. We're very excited to have you on staff. Thank you so much. See you in a week. OK. Bye. Congratulations. I can't believe it! <laughs> I started a week! Oh, I can't believe it! That's so great! I had lunch with Mary and Charlie this afternoon. Oh, yeah? How'd it go? Good. Mm -hmm. What's it for? Fundraiser. Oh, you know what that is. That's payback for the job. No. Oh, OK. He said you've been showing up late for work. Well, it's not like you. That's my lieutenant. He's just being a hard ass, that's all. I'm telling you, it's nothing. OK. I just want this to work. Honey, it's going to work. It's going to work. I promise. Better be on time. Got it. Sure you, Mrs. Escalade, there's definitely some kind of mistake. 
Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll call you back just as soon as I... Okay, I, under, I understand. Okay, bye. What's going on? They ran a background check and a DWI came up. What? Driving while intoxicated, David? I've never even gotten a parking ticket. I'm gonna lose the teaching job because of this. Oh, right, hang on a second. There's obviously a mistake, okay? I'll look into it, I'll get it worked out. Yeah, but I'm supposed to start in less than a week. How could this happen? Good morning, Dr. Lin. Oh, hello, Melissa. Thank you for taking the time to see me. Uh, yeah, what, uh, what was it you wanted to talk about? I was hoping I could apply for the extra credit. We spoke about it in class the other day. Uh-huh. Well, I'd like to write a treatise exploring Chinese-American relations. What did you say? I wanted to talk to you about the extra credit. Oh, yeah. That would be good. Excuse me. Mary, you see my coffee cup? It's in your hand. No, my coffee cup, the one I always use. You got detectives out there. Maybe they can find it. Speaking of detectives, has Sekka made it in yet this morning? Haven't seen him. Uh. These things happen. A similar name, an entry error, computer glitch, whatever. Is that Jennifer's social? Yeah. Her date of birth? Yeah, that's right. Is that your old address in Queens? Yes, Mickey, all the information here is right. But this never happened. I don't know what to tell you, kid. Because if somebody hacked into this database, they didn't do it as a prank. All right. I'm gonna have to call the Queen's DA. Yeah, I know. I saw the police report. Yeah, look, it's a mistake. You know what? I'm, I'll call back later. He said to send you right in when you got here. Okay. Well, that's good. When do you think you can get it over to me? Okay. Well, then I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So nice of you to stop by. Really good. Have a seat. You know, in this wonderfully politically correct world that we live in, I'm supposed to ask you if you have any issues and do you need a counselor? No. Good. You see, because this may not be the big city here, but we actually do have some crimes that need to be solved. So. I would appreciate it if any problems you have, you would solve them on your own time. I understand. Good. Now we can both get back to work. My business. I'll take care of it. The only reason you're in business is because we allow you to be in business. Now, listen to me very carefully. We don't know what he knows, and we don't know who he's told. When he is shut down, there can be no loose ends. So, let us handle it. <laughs> yeah? Well, what's taking you so long, huh? You see, that is what's wrong with America. They have no patience for war. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it? What are you, fucking crazy? We have enough problems in Chicago with the FBI banging us up and down the fucking street. What do you think will happen 
They tie us to that thing, huh? Are you going to keep the Boy Scouts at the FBI off our case, huh? <laughs> I didn't think so. Look, just stay out of it. Now, I brought you into this uh, as a courtesy. If we need you, we'll let you know. Huh. You needed us 40 years ago. You. You brought the family into this. No. You just make sure that it doesn't backfire and bite us in the ass. Understand? Huh? Oh, I gotta get going. Where are you going? Oh, I'm having drinks with the mayor. Oh, really? Yeah, he's having a campaign fundraiser. Fundraiser? I can use some fundraising myself. Come to notch up police salaries. <laughs> and don't forget about the pensions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. David Vinny's kid. Oh, shit. Last time I saw you, you were this big. How you been? Good. I'm good. Hey, Tommy, get your ass over here. I'll catch you later. So, Mickey, hey, what, uh, hey. what's going on? The reason I called. Uh-huh. Took a little look at that photograph you gave me. It's not a Winchester Model 70 under that guy's coat. It's a C-27-66 man liquor Carcano. The same type of rifle used to kill John Kennedy. I gotta go. I'll talk to you later, okay? Take care. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I only wish that the city would do something to fix up that park on Willow Street. That would really be lovely. Oh, now, Mrs. Clyde, I assure you, I have allocated funds for just that purpose. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it becomes. No, of no, that. I understand. It's okay. Lieutenant Langione, nice of you to attend my little event. Do I have a choice? Not really. <laughs> Huh. The late David Secker. Let me go to the bar have a drink. David, we were just talking about you. Mayor, honey, how you doing? Hi. Mr. Mayor. Senator. Oh, I can't thank you enough for lending your support. I'm always happy to support you. Moreover, there may be a few votes here for me, too. <laughs> oh. Monica, let me know when the media arrives. Of course, Senator. Senator. David and Jennifer Secker. Jennifer, David, what a lovely daughter you have. <laughs> he just can't help himself, huh? It's such a pleasure, Senator. Pleasure's all mine. Senator, New Jersey One Crew's here for you. Fine. Excuse me. I better get over there or he'll use up all the tape. <laughs> what happened? I know. I got... It's almost seven. I know. I got caught up with something. I just, I'm sorry. I got here as fast as I could. Oh, I was I think it's a really nice party. I do, too. Yeah, right? Yeah, David? I just, I, I, David? Huh. Oh, my God, look at you. Oh, you look fantastic. Wow. When was the last Actually, time I... this is my wife, Jennifer. Linda Morton. Hi. Hi. Linda, the center is ready for your interview. Gotta go. Listen, you should call me. I want to catch up. Nice to meet you. Dr. Lynn. How are you tonight? Good.
Do I uh, know you? <laughs> no. I just wanted to say I loved your book. Oh, well, I'm glad you liked it. Thanks. And Dr. Lind. You're not thinking about changing your mind, are you? About what? All I'm saying is, you're right. There is no conspiracy. Never was. Have a nice night, Doctor. I can't believe you would go out with someone like her. Come on, the way she just walked right up, wrapped herself all around you. It's like I wasn't even there. That's just the way that she is, okay? But I don't agree with it. I don't think it's right, but that's the way she is. And that's why I'm with you, and I'm not with someone like that. Maybe this is the guy that fired the fourth shot. There was no fourth shot. Wait a minute. There was acoustic evidence of a fourth shot. The acoustic evidence has been discredited. Okay, what about Kennedy's head? When he got shot, his head went back really violently. And what about that? Like he got shot from the front. When the bullet exits the skull, the brains explode out, the head snaps back. It's simple physics, David. Okay. So maybe you were right. Yeah, maybe you were right when you said that the guy in the grassy knoll was not there to kill Kennedy, he was there to kill Oswald. Oh, for Christ's sakes, David, I was making that up as I went along. I was trying to prove a point to you. The point is, when it comes to the Kennedy assassination, anything goes. No one can separate the fact from the fiction. It's, it's all a conspiracy theory everywhere. Take this, for example. What is it? It's a faculty handbook. It was left on my desk, open to the chapter on termination of tenure. Don't you find that a little strange? Yeah, it's strange. So what? And the other night, some man approached me near my house. Who was it? I don't know who he was. Well, what did he say? He asked me if I was changing my mind about the Kennedy conspiracy. I haven't changed my mind. I pulled some photos that I could document were taken on November 22, 1963 in Dealey Plaza that contained at least one woman in them. If you can find Thelma Marshall in one of those photographs, then you and I have something to talk about. So how'd it go? We have a real problem. This jerk off gonna take care of this thing in Jersey or what? Who the fuck knows? What are you talking about? I'm talking about you can't trust this motherfucker. Let me tell you something. This guy and Kennedy were like this. They were like this. Yeah. yeah. Kennedy even gave me a humidor full of Cuban cigars. The fucking humidor, nice, with a brass plaque. It's Kennedy's signature engraved on the fucking thing. What do you think of that? When they killed Kennedy, he let it happen. You tell me what kind of rat bastard this fucking guy is, huh? Low life rat bastard.
Steve. Steve. There she is, right there. And that's her husband standing right behind her. Can I help you with something? No, I'm doing okay, pal. Oh, you are? Yeah. What are you doing here? Look, dude, just fuck off, all right? Okay. Call oh, that PD. Easy. Easy. What is going on? David, what are you doing? Sorry. you guys know what we're doing here today. But we're gonna go over a few things to make sure that everybody's safe. All right, so everybody got their vests ready to go? Weapons, ammunition? All right. It's not a high-risk entry. Suspect is a low-level dealer. Honey, I'm right in the middle of the briefing. I'll be right there. Make sure that everybody's prepared. All right, we're gonna hit the front door and the back door at the same time. Mantia, you're gonna team up with Foster and Kelowna. Well, hold on a second here. I'm Carl Stapp PD. What's going on? We have a warrant. A warrant for what? Have a good day, sir. Stop him. It's all right, Donna. All you had to do was ask. If you wanted the goddamn film strip, all you had to do was ask me for it. What? Oh, you know what? Don't bullshit me, okay? Two of your agents were just at my house. What are you talking about? I didn't send anyone to your house. Oh, really? Here's a warrant. I don't care what this says. It's not the FBI. I would know about it. Oh, come on, please. I'm telling you, it wasn't us. All right, just give me a second here, all right? I don't want to be disturbed. I shouldn't be doing this. Doing what? So how'd it go? Yeah, we got a real problem. Is this jerk off going to take care of that thing in Jersey or what? Who the fuck knows? What is it? What are you talking about? This is the Great Lakes Social Club in Chicago. We've had it under surveillance for a while. The guy on the left is Johnny Loma, capo. The guy he's talking to is Joey Barker. Tell you, he even gave me a humidor full of Cuban cigars. A fucking humidor, nice, with a brass plaque with Kennedy's signature engraved on the fucking thing. What do you think of that? And this guy, when they killed Kennedy, he let it happen. You tell me what kind of motherfucker Rat bastard this guy is, huh? A low-life rat bastard. Real fucking scumbag. Obviously, something's going on. And I'm not sure you want to be in the middle of it.
I think it's time to clean this thing up. All right. All right. But not the police officer. Not until we know what he knows. parking lot of two minutes away. Tell me about it. I can't right now. Are you okay? I mean, do you need my help? No, look, I'm fine. Listen, Mangione is looking for you. Tell him I won't be back today. Okay. Thanks. You, that's it, okay. He said he's not coming back today. I need you to do. I need you to go to a friend's house, somebody you haven't talked to, somebody you haven't seen in a long time, and just stay there, okay? And what about you? Don't worry about me. I'm gonna be fine, but I've gotta figure this out, okay? tape at the mall got a good shot of the plate on the Hummer. Right. It's not in the database. What a surprise. Which can only mean a couple of things. It's either out of date, it's fake. Or it's undercover. Right. You know what? At this point, I really don't care who it is, okay? They kept their secret for 40 years. Let them fucking die with it. Now, you have a CIA rep in this office, right? Yeah. Can't you talk to him about all this? You're assuming it's the CIA. Well, who the fuck else could it be? I'll see what I can do. All right. Mickey's gone, and they killed him. It wasn't an accident, okay? You know it as well as I do. 
Within a year of the Kennedy assassination, 15 witnesses died. In 1976, 81 were dead. In 1977, when the House Select Committee opened hearings, 16 more people died that were associated with that investigation. Yeah, I know. And I was about to walk away, but you know what? I can't now. Well, maybe you should have. No. I have to get to somebody. And say what? Your friend died and you think the government did it? That fake FBI agents raided your house, that the CIA took the only piece of evidence you had? How do you think that would sound? I have to do something. Okay, I can't just sit on this. Whatever the truth is, I have to actually try and get it out. <laughs> what happens when the truth isn't enough? Hey, honey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. David. I... I'm here. Is everything gonna be all right? Everything's gonna be fine. I'm gonna work this out, okay? Okay. I love you. You're serious about this, aren't you? I'm very serious. I can't go to my producer with this. I, I, I need more, something. Fine, talk to her. Talk to who? Thelma Marshall, she was there. She shot the film. I don't know. Linda, you know me, okay? I'm not crazy. I wouldn't ask you to do something if I couldn't back it up. Just talk to Thelma Marshall, listen to her story, and then decide. Okay. Okay, I'll do it. Obviously, there's something going on, and I'm not sure you want to be in the middle of it. Sixteen more people died that were associated with that investigation. A lot of people have been working on this for a long time. You're not going to solve it. You're assuming it's the CIA. If you can find Thelma Marshall in one of those photographs, then you and I have something to talk about. It's a C-27-66 Manlika Carcano, the same type of rifle used to kill John Kennedy. Because that man was standing on the grassy knoll. Who else did you tell about this? Is there any other film, David? Talk to me, David. Talk! Is there any other film? Huh? Huh? Who else did you talk to? Is there any other film? Huh? It's a story derived from the fiction. It's all a conspiracy.
David, oh, thank God. I've been trying to reach you all morning. Jennifer. What's wrong? Are you all right? I'm all right. No, you're not. I can hear it in your voice. Oh, Jennifer, I'm okay. I'm all right. Trust me. I'm, I, I'll call you later. I, I'll call you later. David, wait! I want to talk to him. God damn it, Gersh. Get Seck on the phone. Call him. Where are we with this thing? Everything is under control. What is that supposed to mean? It means don't you worry about it. Yeah? That's my middle name, worry. You take care of that cop? It's in the works. Listen, you stay out of this. You telling me that son of a bitch is still alive? I'm gonna put an end to this bullshit. You do nothing. You hear me? You do nothing. Who do we have in Jersey? Cabetti. Cabetti. Good. Give this to Cabetti. Linda, you remember our first date? Over here. David, oh my God, what happened? Did you talk to her? David, this is crazy. Did you talk to her? Did you talk to Thelma Marshall? She's dead. When I got to the nursing home, they said she died this morning. They killed her. Uh, no, they killed her, just like they killed Mickey. For God's sake, David, she was 85 years old. Listen to me, OK? This is really happening, all right? just shot at look Gary I'm telling you this is real yeah and if it's not I'll take the hit all right okay in an exclusive interview I'll be talking with Karlstadt police detective David Seca about what could be the smoking gun in a conspiracy to kill President Kennedy you don't want to miss this. Second interview coming up in 90 seconds. Jennifer, what are you doing at the house? David, where are you? I called headquarters and they said- What are you doing at the house? 30 seconds, let's go. Will you bring the guest out now? Jennifer, listen to me. Get back in the car and drive right back to where you were, okay? 20 seconds. Will you bring the guest out now, please? Oh my God. David, there's somebody in the house. Okay, 10 seconds. Where the fuck is the guest? <laughs>
What the hell did Seka get himself into? I don't know. Second. You okay? I'm okay. Hmm. Do you have any idea who this guy was? No. Gianluca Gabetti, Chicago. Nice family guy. Pending an investigation, you are on death duty. CIA is definitely out of control. I'm not saying there was a conspiracy, but if there was, the CIA's fingerprints are all over it. And that's why I've called the NSA. The National Security Agency? I don't know where else to go with this but the NSA. And they're interested. They want to talk with you, want to hear what you've got to say. When? Sir, Detective Second to see you. Well, Bill Mason, I'm certainly glad to make your acquaintance. We are going to get to the bottom of this. Don't you worry, Detective Secchia. <laughs> oh, please, please have a seat. Oh, may I, may I offer you a drink? Uh, no, thank you. Well, then I, uh, I assume that you don't smoke either. <laughs> but uh, you don't mind if I do, do you? No. A humidor on a press plaque with Kennedy's signature engraved on the fucking thing. When they killed Kennedy, he let it happen. I understand that you are about to become a father. Is that right? Yeah. You will. 
That's quite a responsibility. <laughs> I, I sure hope the, the little lady's in fine health. <laughs> mm, Lord, the good Lord must be pleased with me. He has granted me longevity so I can enjoy uh, my five grandchildren. Hmm? <laughs> mm. So tell me. Tell me what you have so far. Cold, huh? Yeah. You wanna go in? Yeah, okay. <laughs> 